I think that uh, the the one person who, who uh, other than the the concerts that Magnanti did, and certainly his prominence and uh, and his great ability on the accordion, uh, that probably uh, Anthony Gallerini uh, tried to do more for the accordion than anyone else to elevate it from uh, the position of being a, a vaudeville instrument into being a serious uh, instrument for classical music. Uh, he composed, he arranged. Uh, he tried to improve the accordion itself, uh, improving the, the Stradella bass system uh, and a lot of innovations and trying to standardize the switches so that you could, you'd could you have a, uh, a, a serious instrument that could be used in a lot of uh, different situations. Uh, he composed for uh, the uh, orchestra, concerto, accordion concertos. Uh, and and it, it really attempted to uh, throughout his life to to elevate it uh, into being a serious instrument. Like when I was seven years old, and w started in Vaudeville in 1911. That's when already Pietro and Guido were in Vaudeville and Frosini. Yeah. Well, I started in 1911, and I continued in in it until 1932 when vaudeville went into decline entirely because of the talking motion pictures, sound, and so forth. So that was 21 years. Well, my father was sort of uh, awkward in his ma manners and, and so forth. So this man thought, dress you up in clowns, and that way, if you act awkward, it's, it's natural. You're in clown costume and conceive a name for the two of us that, that, that sound French, because the French were very popular. So we called us Paolo and Paulette. While I was playing the uh, Lyric Theater in Indianapolis, between shows, the, the thought came to me to open up my left hand keyboard and take out the buttons in which the dominant seventh chord would respond, because I had in mind to eliminate the fifth, since rules of traditional harmony uh, maintain that the fifth can be omitted and the chord is still recognized due to the root in third and minor seventh. So I opened up the left hand and with a file, I filed off the pin that would cause the interval of a fifth to be sounding and made it silent. And that was in 1923, I believe. And I went on for years that way. Whatever regimen I played, that's the way it had to be, even if it were of another make. In 1950, then, when I was president of the Accordion Teachers Guild, and I was engaged to go to Europe on a concert tour, I made it a point that when I finally got to Castel Fidardo, which is the cradle of the accordion industry over there in Italy. I went and visited all of the factories that I could and recommended that they eliminate the fifth, and most of them followed my advice. That was in 1950. At first, we only had one register in the right hand and none in the left hand. That was a very, very beginning. But later on, it improved slightly where you have a couple of more registers, you might have three or four changes in the right hand, and the left hand with one change at least. But around the 30s, yes, I'd say the 36, the manufacturers came out with multiple registers in the right hand and the left hand too. Uh, is the accordion difficult to play? And so I, I explain that yes, it is difficult if you want to go the, the distance of being a, pro, a virtuoso on the instrument and bring out its utmost capacity of music. But then I compare it with other instruments. I, I say that the violin is the most difficult because you start from scratch you have to produce the tone, you have to produce the note, the pitch, and the bowing. Whereas 
on the other instruments, piano, you strike a note, you get the correct pitch right there, harmony and so forth. So the piano does not compare quite as much. But the accordion, yes, because of both different keyboards and the bellows, I say is the second most typical if you want to become a virtuoso.